I grew up on the water with my dad fishing, crabbing, uh, shrimping, doing everything you can. When I grew up, it was things that we needed to eat. That's how it was for as long as the people in Suquamish have been here. It's, we come after this for food for our people. Right now we're on a boat called the Casino and it's owned by the Suquamish tribe. They contract divers to come out and harvest the gooey ducks. I've been out here for five years as a commercial diver. Um, we harvest gooey duck clams anywhere from 30 to 70 feet uh, in the Puget Sound. Gooey duck is probably one of my favorite foods. It's uh, very filling, it's delicious. Uh, you feel very wholesome and clean when you eat it. It's the cornerstone of our lives. Soundkeeper's been around for 30 years and uh, a main aspect of our work is to patrol our waterways. We ought to be worried about a lot here. This is one of the most toxic rivers in the country. It's getting cleaner, but it has some real nasty stuff in it. The PCBs, which are a known carcinogen, also arsenic, lead, mercury, a uh, number of dioxin, it's got petroleum in it, it's got uh, dissolved heavy metals. So we know we need to do something about stormwater to help our fish, uh, to help bring Puget Sound back to health. Monitoring studies all around Puget Sound and around the country show that the water quality suffers the more impervious surfaces you have. So the more concrete, asphalt, rooftops, the water quality is going to suffer. In fact, when it gets over about 10%, you're going to get some real damage to the watershed. Uh, so we need, knowing that through urbanization we have a lot of areas that are under pavement, we need to use management techniques to control that. It's a web and everything is dependent on everything. Any type of pollution that would affect the species of Puget Sound would, would therefore affect the tribe harvesting. Actually, we see that right away um, with the bivalve shellfish, mostly because they're a um, filter feeder. And um, in areas where you have point source pollution, for instance, sewer outfalls, marinas, um, organic pollution with lots of bacteria and viruses, it, it doesn't kill the organism, but it, it's not fit to eat for human consumption. Where you have larger populations, uh, there's a larger risk. The Department of Health has closed this river to all consumption of resident fish. So all shellfish, all crab, all bottom fish are way over the safe limits for human consumption. And people are still fishing for those species. Fishing is a very important part of Northwest culture. Obviously the tribes that have been here for thousands of years. We have the Suquamish tribe, Muckleshoot tribe in this area and the historic home of the Duwamish people. But also, it's a, recreational fishing is very important, though we have a big Latino population, Asian Pacific Islanders, uh, Eastern Europeans. Fishing is a big part of their cultures. We need to get this river recovered to, to where you can safely eat the fish. Now, the elders in the tribe, they love seafood, and because when they were growing up, it was pretty much all they ate. So we try to make sure that they get their fair share of gooey ducks and clams and fish. So uh, part of our job is to make sure that they, they get it. Uh, we don't take more than our fair share. We try to look out for the Puget Sound. We take trash out of the Puget Sound. We do what we can. To be honest, I'm not very optimistic about the future of gooey duck in the Puget Sound. With all the pollution in, our, in the waters here, it just it doesn't seem like it would be very realistic to be optimistic or hopeful. I think we've got a window of maybe 20 years where we need to make some very significant changes. But we've got a lot of people coming in, huge amount of population coming in. And so how we adapt and um, 
how we impact the environment in the future really needs to change if we're going to have a, a good environment, you know, for our children. Thank you.